Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We are in the baby barn again because today we are going to lock down our chicken eggs. So what exactly does that mean? Well, first of all, it's time to increase humidity. Okay, so you want to get it over 50% now. Um, I generally don't have to add any water to accomplish this, but you do want to get it over 50%. Not a ton over, okay? Not a ton or the chicks will drown, but get it over 50%. Uh, temperature stays exactly where it has been for the last 18, 19 days. So you want to keep your temperature at 99.5 Fahrenheit or 37.5 Celsius. Okay? Um, if you can, you can if you want, lower the temperature by half a degree. I don't. Um, some people like to do that. I, it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't affect it either way. Don't raise the temperature. So if you want to drop the temperature by half a degree, that's totally fine, but don't raise it. Um, for the most part, just leave the temperature alone. It's really not a big deal. Okay, so now what do we have to do? Now we're going to get our eggs. So I'm just going to lean down here, unplug the incubator they're in, and there we go. All right. This incubator has the chicken eggs, okay? This incubator up here. That has chicken eggs. Okay, whoops, sorry about the camera. That has chicken eggs in it. This is my hatcher. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take the top off the hatcher, put that underneath, okay? We are going to lay our eggs flat on their sides in the incubator. We want to kind of space them out evenly in the uh, hatcher here. And we don't want them touching each other, okay? And then we are going to walk away. <laughs> walk away until they hatch. We'll put the lid back on, plug everything in, and then walk away. Um, we want something under the uh, chicks when they hatch. So we need a mat to lay under the eggs. So in this case, I am actually using um, a grippy shelf liner. Some incubators come with a hatching mat, like a cardboard thing. I don't like those. Okay, I, I don't like the hatching mats that come with the incubators. Um, if, you, if your incubator did come with one, absolutely give it a shot, because maybe you'll like it, but I don't. Um, Bernsay has come with a cardboard liner that you can buy more of, so you can get more of them, but I don't like them. I like this grippy shelf paper. I'll provide a link to this grippy, grippy shelf paper that I like. This isn't the sticky kind, this is just the woven kind. Okay, I've also been known to use fleece blankets, but I actually like this the best. So I will provide a link to the same brand and the roll that I use, and you just cut it to shape. Okay, so you want to fold or cut your material to fit in the incubator or the hatching tray if your incubator has a hatching tray. So if you're using a, like a big cabinet incubator, the bottom is off in the hatching tray. So you can just line that and just leave your other eggs and only lock down the eggs that are ready to hatch. Okay. Um, we're going to place the eggs carefully on top. I'm going to take the lid off and we're going to candle each egg to make sure they look like they developed fully. Okay, so I'm going to shut the door. Turn off the light, and we still have quite a bit of light coming in, but that's okay because I'm just making sure these eggs are viable. Candler, candler's important. Take your egg. You probably can't see very well, but we're actually going to move the, sorry for the quick spin, sorry about that. It's darker over here. So we're going to move down here, okay, to show you, I'm actually going to go even lower, forgive the fiddling here, but it's darker down here. So you can kind of see, you can't see great, but you can see a little bit. And what you're looking for is movement. Now you probably can't see it, but I can, he's alive, okay? So you just do this with every egg. He's alive. 
You might not be able to see the movement because it doesn't show up great on camera, but you're looking for movement. This guy's a little bit saddled, but still alive. Okay. You just check each one. Make sure they're alive. They haven't died. Movement might be hard to see, to be fair. The movement might be hard to see because at this point, they're filling up the eggshell and it's difficult. So they shouldn't have pipped. So this is another saddle one. But he's still moving. Movement might be hard to detect simply because there's not a whole lot of room. Oh, that guy's really moving, so he I can see. There's not a whole lot of room left in the shell for the chick to move. Okay, so you're just going to check every egg. You don't want to put an egg in that's dead. So if there was an egg that you're concerned about. Now, I didn't pre-candle these, so you're seeing them at the same time I am. He's alive. I'm actually wondering if there's one I can show you that died because the de dead ones kind of have a yellow hue. And these are all pink. But so far, no, oh, he's alive. So far, I do not have any dead ones. Okay, that's fine. See, another saddle. Saddle means the. Uh, if I drop it down here, you can see it a little better. But the saddle is the kind of dip in the air sac. But he's still moving, so he's alive. Now, these are my shipped eggs. So the fact that there's this many... Okay, I don't have any dead ones. <laughs> okay, fine. I won't show you what a dead one looks like. But if you have movement in all of them, then guess what? You're good to go. So I'm just going to spin the camera again. Sorry. Boom. Okay, here we are. Those are our eggs. They're all alive. Okay, so we candled them. They're looking good. Everything's, you know, hunky-dory in there. We're going to grab our lid, stick the lid on. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to have to plug it in. Okay, close the incubator and walk away. This is actually the hardest part. We are not going to open the incubator at all until the hatch is complete. Okay, we're done. Continue to monitor the temperature and humidity, adding water to your incubator as needed, but do not open the incubator. Leave it. You might have to adjust your vent. I don't. I have to leave it open. But follow your manufacturer's directions. Um, if you haven't hatched in your incubator before for best practices, you can adapt those practices as you learn. While you're waiting for hatching to start, clean and disinfect um, waterers. Get a brooder set up. We'll talk about that later. Okay? Um... We will talk about setting up the brooder later, but it gives you something to do while you're waiting for this to happen. Okay, so when do you lock down? This is kind of a bit of a debate a little bit, okay? Lockdown occurs two or three days before the eggs are due to hatch. I like to lock down on day 19. A lot of people like to lock down on day 18. Do not lock down after day 19, okay? Day 19 is the absolute maximum you can let your eggs go before lockdown and they do need to be on their sides they do need to have room for the chick to roll and position himself it's really important uh, some people like to hatch with their eggs upright I do not like doing that um, on their side really does work best almost all of the time can they hatch upright in trays sure but sometimes they get stuck <laughs> because they can't push up very well so because of that Hatch them on their sides. It's just better. So, um, lock down somewhere in that 24-hour period between day 18 and day 19. Okay, I am, actually today I'm at day 18, but only because I'm not going to be home tomorrow. So, I won't be able to lock down tomorrow. So, lock down day 18 or 19. Okay? Lock down, I like to lock down in the evenings instead of during the day. Uh, sweet spot, yeah, sweet spot is day 18. Okay? That's the best time to lock down. So now we don't do anything. Okay. At some point on day 20, you might start to hear cheeping from these eggs. That means that at least one chick has pipped internally. Still don't open the incubator, but that means it's broken through the membrane and into the air sac. 
okay? And that means the chick is breathing for the first time. You still don't open the incubator, but if you hear cheeping, but you don't see any cracks in the eggs, you do know that cracking in the egg is coming next. So that is the entirety of lockdown. The other thing is you might need to add water. I don't, because it's freaking humid here. So I'm turning the light back on. Um, open the door so we get some more light in here. But it's freaking humid here right now. But little bottle of water, I would add it to this port here to bring up the humidity if I needed to. I do not need to. It is so humid here right now. Okay, right now the humidity... Oh, what is my humidity? Oh, great. The humidity is 78. I do not need to add water. Okay? No water. So I'm not going to put any water in this. I am just going to let it go. But if you did need to add water because your humidity is too low, this is the time. Okay? This is when you add the water to your external port or your water trays, whatever your incubator has. So at that point, everything is locked down. You do nothing else. You plug in the hatcher and you walk away. Yes, I will provide links to this hatcher and I'll provide links to the incubator that the eggs came out of. See, it's a fantastic incubator, except for the eggs that simply did not develop because they were shipped eggs and shipped eggs always have a lower hatch rate. All of the guys that developed and were alive when I candled made it to lockdown. Not a single failure. So good eggs, good incubator. I uh, do love the lady I purchased these eggs from. She's excellent. So... I will provide a link to the incubator, the hatcher, and the grippy shelf liner that's under there because that stuff is a lifesaver. At any rate, we are done for the night. We are going to check in periodically as they start hatching, and I'll talk about the hatching process. So as soon as I see an external pip, I will talk about that. But for now, there's nothing really to look at except an incubator with eggs sitting in it. So... That's about it for today. Thanks for joining us here at Anderson Acres. We'll see you tomorrow.